Welcome to part two of patent research, governing laws in general. Please bear with me. I do have points I'm leading up to with this video series. I know it may seem like a lot of wordy legal jargon, but it's important to cover the basics so that you understand the points I'm going to make. And with that, let's begin. All patents, according to patent law, are forms of exclusionary rights. This, however, does not give the holder of the patent the justified right to exploit the patent. The grant and enforcement of a patent will be governed by national laws and international treaties where those agreements have been given effect in national patent law. As a result of these characteristics, patent law is territorial in nature. In most instances, a country will form a patent office with responsibility in regards to operating the na that nation's patent system within alignment with its relevant patent laws. The particular patent office will typically have responsibility for the grant of patents, infringement issues, or cases heard by the national court system. In most nations, both individuals and corporate entities may have for a patent, however, in the United States, only the inventor of the underlying creation may apply for the patent. Important facts about patent law history. Patent law is a branch of the legal system that focuses on the regulation, enforcement, and jurisprudence of patent rights. In the United States, the staple behind patent law is how it enforces patent rights, which consist of granting inventors or patent holders the exclusive right to prevent others from creating, using, selling, or importing their patented inventions or ideas. It is important to note that the patent rights do not give inventors the right to create and use an invention, but simply to prevent others from doing so. Patent law as it exists today can be said to be traced back to the 15th century Venice where the first patent law was created and enforced, preventing others from using the inventions of inventors without proper permission or authority. In the United States, patent law would be entered into legislation by the first Congress in 1790 with the Patent Act. The Patent Act of 1790 would have its principles based on those established in Venice in 1474, though applying in a more modernized or contemporary way. The first patent in the United States would be granted in the same year on July 31st to Samuel Hopkins and his creation of a new method to make potash. On the international level, the key body of legislation would come in the form of the Paris Convention for the Protection of Industrial Property which was signed in 1883. The overall purpose of the Paris Convention was to create and establish a more uniform set of codes and laws regarding the recognition of patent rights on an international scale. United States Patent Law in the United States, the current body of legislation that governs all aspects of patents in the country are contained in Title 35 of the United States Code. Title 35 would also create and implement the United States Patent and Trademark Office, the sole and exclusive governmental entity in charge of registering and granting patents 
as well as administering and enforcing applicable laws in regards to patents. Title 35 is divided into four parts. Part 1, U United States Patent and Trademark Office. Part 2, Patentability of Inventions and Grant of Patents. Part 3, Patents and Protection of Patent Rights. And Part 4, Patent Cooperation Treaty. The New Deal program of legislation enacted during the administration of President Franklin Roosevelt established a large number of new federal agencies which generated a shapeless and confusing mass of new regulations. There was no one place for a person affected by the regulations to examine them until 1935 when Congress created the Federal Register a daily publication of the rules and federal documents produced by the executive branch of the federal government and by the agencies. By 1937, this chronological compilation of regulations was effective in informing the public of new regulations, but it did not help a researcher who wanted to locate a regulation pro promulgated earlier. A publication that organized the regulations by subject was needed. To meet this need, Congress created the Code of Federal Regulations as a more permanent and better organized source of federal regulations. The original methods employed in compiling the code are still used. Documents are selected from the Federal Register and arranged in a scheme of 50 titles some which are the same as the titles used to organize federal statutes in the U.S. Code. Each title is divided into chapters, parts, and sections. The first federal United States patent law would eventually prove to have some success. This would also prove to be somewhat of an understatement because by 1793 the government would have to make some changes and introduce revisions to the law in order to accommodate for the influx of patents that would overwhelm the patent board, the administrative faction in charge of patent registration. Furthermore, further revisions were necessary because of the fact that complaints from the public regarding issues of patent protection and unauthorized use were becoming a growing concern, particularly for those that found a commercial use for the invention and patented products. The revision of the Patent Act in 1793 would also provide for some significant provisions that would help further shape the American landscape regarding patent laws and legislation. Eventually, for the purpose of commerce, the recording and registration of intellectual property would be necessary to provide for recognition to those inherent rights, as well as a physical record that such creations exist. Countries across the world would establish their own systems and legislature that would govern all aspects of intellectual property. For the United States, the defining moment that would prove to have noticeable implications on intellectual property is the inception of the Patent Act of 1790. The Act of 1790 would become the first piece of legislature to form a cohesive collection of regulations and provisions at the federal level. It also included some progressive pr provisions such as registration, process, and schedule of fees. The implications on intellectual property left behind by the Patent Act of 1790 are still very present today. For the most part, United States patenting procedures and laws governing and regulating patents are very much influenced by the legislation and provisions enacted in the short seven-section bill that would become the Patent Act of 1790. Though current legislation would build and become more extensive in the future, the Act of 1790 provided a solid foundation that included some of the most important aspects of patents and laws in the United States.
Concepts such as a patent infringement and patent licensing would undoubtedly be formulated from this legislature as they are currently applied under patent laws. The act also provided for a distinct registration procedure that is similar to the process today. Patenting products and inventions would become an important aspect that required the protection of federal laws and such importance is realized and enacted by the Act of 1790. Not only would the Patent Act provide for exclusive rights to inventors and creators, but it would also allow for a sense of security, knowing that these creations would be protected by federal laws and the government. Please check out Patent Research Part 3 coming soon. We will continue with the governing laws on patents. Thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe.